time. We want you to listen real close at what shall be read to you. Lots, lots of people don't believe it, but I like to read it whether they believe or not. That's right. right. It is not, it is not uh, for me to choose your belief. It is for, right. and forget about the rest of it. That's right. The uh, portion here, the significance of the name, the significance Let us quote it. The name was not invented as in the case of other religions by those who profess it. This name is on the other hand expressly given to this religion in the Holy Quran. It says, this day I have perfect for you, your religion, and completed on you, and chosen for you Islam as a religion. Now, this day, when was it that he had completed his favors on us? When was they, uh, that day when Allah himself said these words. Nobody knows. Nobody can understand the hour or the day, the year or the month when this was said by Allah himself. There's no date to it because Islam came with God when he came. When the first God came about, Islam was with him. And when we came about, we find ourselves on the earth. We don't know when. So Allah had made perfect a religion and he gave it to us. Being the first and the only people on the earth, he gave it to us. And today, we have returned back to that religion and that nation, which the name Islam means a nation as I have often repeated to us. He had complete his favors on us. What favor did he complete? The favor that he had complete with us is the mercy that he had given and more he had give to us everything that he desired for us to have his favor then was completed and everything that we desire to have we ask for it through the prayer that you said at the opening of this meeting. It is there, regardless to what one might say. It is there in a few words, as we would say, guide us on the right path, the path of those upon whom thou hast bestowed favor. All right, well, if that's true, as we know it is, why don't we thank Allah for his coming to us That's right. That's right. and giving to us such favor that he has bestowed upon us. We ask him in the prayer for everything that we want. It is in that right. prayer. If you study it and understand its meanings,
that is found in chapter 5 verse 3 and in another place surely the true religion with Allah is Islam chapter 3 and 18 it is moreover a significant name in fact the word Islam indicates the very essence of the religious systems known by that name its primary significance is the making of peace and the idea of peace is the dominant idea in Islam right. a Muslim according to the Holy Quran is he who has made his peace with God and man with the Creator as well as his creatures peace with God implies complete submission to his will who is the source of all purity and goodness and peace with man implies the doing of good to one's fellow man and both these ideas are briefly but beautifully expressed in the Quran in the following words yea whosoever submit himself entirely to Allah and he is the doer of good to others he has his reward from his Lord and there is no fear for him nor shall he grieve chapter 2 112 verse that and that only is salvation according to the Holy Quran think about if you do something good to people after you have submit yourself entirely to Allah and a doer of good to others think now just that alone is salvation and that is very easy to do and as the Muslim is in perfect peace he enjoys peace of mind and contentment and that is something that everyone likes to enjoy is a peace of mind keeping the mind at rest keeping the mind peaceful everyone desires that and when we don't have a peace of mind or peace at mind we are in a bad state of condition peace with God implies complete submission to his will who is the source of all purity and goodness and peace with man implies the doing of good to one's fellow man and both these ideas are briefly but beautifully expressed in the Quran in the following words yea whosoever submit himself entirely to Allah and he is the doer of good to others he has his reward from his Lord and there is no fear for him nor shall he grieve chapter 2 112 Holy Quran I like to sometime bring uh, a point to you double I'm saying like to repeat it again to you that and that only is salvation according to the Holy Quran and as the Muslim is in perfect peace he enjoys peace of mind peace of mind and contentment that is the best state a man can be in 
peace is greetings of one Muslim to another. And peace shall also be the greetings of those in paradise. And their greetings in it shall be peace. Chapter 10, verse 10. Nay, in the paradise which Islam depicts, no word shall be heard except peace, peace. As the Holy Quran says, they shall not hear therein vain or sinful discourse, except the word peace, peace. Chapter 56, verse 25 to 26. The author, author of peace is also a name of Allah mentioned in the Holy Quran, 59 and 23. And the goal to which Islam leads is the abode of peace. As it is said in 1025, and Allah invites to the abode of peace. As is said in 1025, and Allah invites to the abode of peace. Peace is therefore the essence. Listen good. Peace is therefore the essence of Islam. Peace is the essence of it. The essence of this peace. It goes on to say, being the root from which it springs. Islam is the root from which peace comes from, from which it springs. That is what the Muslims seek all the time. Peace, peace, peace. That's right. And the fruit, fruit which it yields, the fruit which Islam yields, which is the name of the brothers in the nation of Islam, the fruit of Islam. That's right. It yields peace, peace. That's right. So we are in a state now to know what we should have. We don't want a religion that has been uh, like other religions, which has been uh, given their names by uh, other people and not by God himself. Islam being the root from which it springs and the fruit which it yields. And Islam is thus preeminently preeminently the religion of peace. Thank you for listening. Now, brothers and sisters, we desire today, as last Sunday, we almost complete. We almost complete our our journey on that subject. So today we are going to start another. We did mention of last Sunday of how we was with the goat and the sheep. Right. That's right. We did mention that part. But today we are going to start a new a new one. 
we was at the end of that one. I said to you last Sunday that we had 15 more minutes and we completed just about excepting a few words in which that we will say some other times from it. But I want to um, begin another one today from the same book, Our Savior Has Arrived, from the same book. We want to begin another one. And this one that we shall begin with today it is found in the the one hundred beginning at the one hundred and ten. The one hundred and ten page. Excuse me for a moment. The 110th 10 page. This book is just about gone, as I told you. So we won't use it after this one. After today. We'll try another one. We have another one. This one is worn out. When you wear them out like that, you just go out. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir, brother. It is worn out. Today we shall start our subject in the same book that the messenger gave to us, the subject is found in our Savior has arrived, chapter 23, He, Allah, makes all things new. That's the one we will start on today. It is very long. It's a long subject. I hope to complete it with you in a month. I guess it'll take that or more to complete this subject with you. In talking with it, uh, what he is saying, it is, he, makes, he makes his word clear. There's nothing that you have hardly to break down, nothing That's that right. you have to break down to it. If you just read it and study it yourself, you'll understand what he is saying. Because it's plain, he's not using the big words like the uh, wise men do. Right. And then you go home and you don't know what it is. You got to get the dictionary to find out everything that he's saying. You don't use that. So he, we take this this page, 110, chapter 23. He, Allah, makes all things new. Now, I want to prove a point to you that he made known to us who the devil is and that he is a man That's right. from the Quran. That's right. That's right. You know, a lot of people don't believe that. They read it, but they don't know it. And they think that the footnote is something that is another man's idea. Well, it can't be too much of a man's idea when he is telling you all the time that the words mean this and the words mean that. Okay. He can't, he's not putting his little two cents in so much. He's only telling you what the meaning 
of the words that is in the, the words that is said to be spoken by God himself. So I am, I believe that it is good to have a person like that when a book is written, to do that kind of a writing. There's a book that was called the New Testament, Clark's Note on the Bible. And he had footnotes breaking it down. And you find a lot of Bibles got footnotes in them that is broken down by some man. Well, this, uh, they, they are broken down by men that knows that language that the Bible is in or the Quran or any other book that it's in. I have read other books that was not religious books and they had footnotes in them and it was telling you and I what the meaning was when you get to this word. It's telling you what it is. So that, I think that should sell our arguments. That's why the messenger says if you are in an argument, the Holy Quran will sell it. That's right. So let us quote one of his uh, paragraphs that he have here, number one paragraph in the, he makes all things new. He, Master Farad Muhammad, God in person. They don't want you to say that Master Farad Muhammad was God. He came in that person with something invisible. He called the, the God that the, well, it got to be a spook or something if he says you can't see it. But people say they do see spooks. <laughs> so if they can see, so look at that. So the one that we saw was no spook. Right. I have seen him take off his shoes and socks and show us his feet so that we will know good that he was not an invisible something. Yes, sir. And I seen for myself him from his uh, waist up and from uh, a portion of his die down. I have seen that. I mean naked. I had to go into his room in the hotel to take him a razor so he could shave. And he was not dressed when I walked in there. There was nobody in there but he and I. And um, I tried to look. I tell you the facts. I looked. I tried to look. And I didn't find nothing spookish about that man. Not a thing. And that's the one that Messenger Elijah Muhammad said to us is God in the person. Now, by me taking him the razor, if he was God, he don't shave or this or that. Oh, yeah. The Bible said in that day, God will shave with a razor. And I, I know that I'm a good witness of that by taking to him that razor for him to shave. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. A witness bearer to the facts. He Allah makes all things new. Who came in the person of Master Farad Muhammad will create a new heaven and a new earth. He would create a new heaven and a new earth, a new Islam. He would make for us a new Islam and a new government and a new people. The new earth referred to is a new people who will change the old into such a great future that actually the earth will look like a new earth and a new earth will be made here in what we call America. Yep. You understand? 
That is why today we don't look for a ship to come up and take us back to Africa. We, uh, we have left there to make all things new by coming here undergoing the slavery that we have went for 400 years now things got to be new now because the one that the God chose himself has came to the west and now brought with them power to resurrect a new earth and a new heaven you understand me like it is said in the revelation said I saw coming down from God a new Jerusalem a new one well that one didn't come this one didn't come down like we thought it came when we read that in the Bible thinking it came from up above no no new earth or no new heaven come from above it is here and we make it for our own selves so brother and sister in this kind of uh, work and teaching this belief among people who had gone astray from self it is like trying to take gasoline to put out a fire sometimes because they don't believe America is our place it belongs to us due to fact the whole earth is ours but the, America is really our own it belongs entirely to us because that we work and brought it to where it is today right. without any pay nobody give us anything right. we just was a dumb people working for nothing the messenger continues he says America is the place where the new earth will actually take place where the new earth will actually take place now he talks about a little fire here after 1,000 years of the destructions of the Fulikawan agrees America destroyed not meaning that we have to die and resurrect again the 11 brothers will come and eat you up one God is not allowed to pattern but a law God in person bring about over righteousness so now this God a thousand years of master Farad Muhammad and not in the cycle <clears throat> This is what is meant by the old past this cycle in this present 25,000 years. But the history of the 6,000 years when he come about past 16,000 years of 6,000 years given to the white race to rule. Given to them to rule six thousand years we are now in the 15th thousand year of our calendar history of, of 25,000 years we live at that time right now in the 15,000 years which is the calendar of the eastern world and the calendar of the 6,000 years in the Western world. He says, 
We are now in the 15,000 year of our calendar history of 25,000 years. The rule of the white race terminates and that year is the beginning of the black nations rule again. So it's your time now to rule again yes, because the time has expired in the year of 1914. That's what the meaning is of Allah coming to us to gather us together. As the messenger right in black man, uh, message to black man that Allah came to unite us together so that we would not be destroyed uh, in the fire of hell when your black people, brothers, come to destroy America. White folks know that their time is up and that these people will come and destroy them. Not only uh, here in America, but he will drive all of the others into America and burn them all up here. The devils all was cast into a lake of fire, right? That's what the book says. Well, that's what he is saying. He will put them all into one place and there he will burn them all up. That's what this warning for. That's why one have to be left out of every, every messenger that came. One is left to carry that word to the people. And that one that is left, he is one who seen, talked, and walked, and ate with the last messenger from the beginning of his time to the ending of his time. He outlives that messenger. Do you see what I'm saying? He outlives him. Read the history of Muhammad. Read the history of Jesus. This one always outlived that one that came and was chosen as a messenger. One of them, of his disciples, will outlive him. It might not be but a year. But he had, he had time to take another man and rise him up before he passes away. To leave him here so that he can uh, tell you, continue with that facts. That's why you hear me say, I'm your last one. There's not another disciple that I know that followed messenger Elijah Muhammad here in Michigan or anywhere in America. Anywhere in America. Anywhere on the earth. That uh, sit down and listen at God and his messenger together. I don't know any. Myself. I don't know them. I know some that did sit down and listen. But they are dead today. I still live. Now if I should pass away in any way and not give this knowledge to you or to one to give to you, then you will not have no more messengers among you to refer to. You understand me? So that is what, why did you see me standing here? And I'll be here quite a while. Don't, don't worry about it last Sunday, nothing to that to, right. to take me away, no. Oh, well, that's nothing, that's nothing. Yeah. Think about what happened. <laughs> oh, God. He is with me. He healed me one time before of a disease that I had out in Firmdale at 504 Woodside Street in Firmdale, Michigan. I was standing there in pain beside him and the messenger. And the question he asked, I couldn't answer it right then because of the pain, but I did answer the question. He asked everybody the question. I did answer it after. He, when he looked around at me, he 
did just like that between my shoulder blades. And the pain done just like that and I haven't had it since. So when a person telling you said, I know this man is such and such, I know that. Well, you know the history of that man or what he has done for you and others. You can't, you can't take that and walk away with it and say, yeah, this, uh, what uh, this man says, well, he'll do very well, but ain't nothing to it. You can't do that. You have got to have some kind of a, a actions that was done while you was with that man and words that he have said to you to know who this man is. You can walk all day with God. All day long. You can eat with him for years and never know that was God with you. Never know it. He don't come telling a whole gang of people that he's God. No tell but one. He don't tell a gang of people that. But it's always one there that this one that he told shows you the things that happened to you while this man was, was there to know then now that this man that we saw was God. Thank you. Real good of the devils. How that we never knew them and how they act and we know they for two people's God and the devil. He didn't put another devil here for us to say, oh yeah, there's a devil there, there's a devil over there, and there's a devil there. No, he didn't put no, nothing like that on there. Uh -uh. The devils, if there was any before the making of these, which I haven't heard, there have been evil men before the devil was made. Because the one that departed the uh, moon from our earth, he was not a righteous holy man. He wanted to kill everybody. A righteous and a holy man don't want to kill everybody if they don't do what he want. The messenger taught us concerning what he was. He was a evil man. Just like Jacob in the Bible. People think he was a great man, but Jacob was an evil scamp. Very evil. So now, let us continue for another few minutes. The rule of a white race terminates at the 16th thousand year. And that year is the beginning of the black nation's rule again, as we rule before 9,000 years year of our calendar history of 25,000 years this is called the 7th thousand year by the Christian writers they call this the 7th thousand year because the Bible of their religion only gives them 6,000 years. They cannot go back as far as the Muslims who knows before the 6,000 years came. And that is the history of which that we are teaching and was taught by Master Farad and Messenger Elijah Muhammad. <laughs> the 7,000 year Excuse me, excuse me, please. As we rule before the ninth thousand year of Yaku, make it. 
This is the beginning of what is prophesied. The seven thousand year, meaning the seven thousand year after the rule of six thousand years by the white race. And in our calendar history, it is the 16,000 year. This is called the 7,000 year by the Christian writers. Do you understand what I'm saying? The 7,000 year, as I just said, is this covering up of the 6,000 year, therefore in the revelation of the Bible tells us of uh, six seals, right? Six seals in the Bible. He said that when he had opened the sixth seal, one come out and that's where the destructions came and when he had opened it, seven thousand the seventh seal which is the seven thousand year then he said he heard a voice saying it is done it's all over with now and it happened in the ending of the six thousand years just like uh, Master Farad taught us of the war of Armageddon it is happening in the 6,000 year at the end of the devil's civilization. But you have moved into the uh, 7,000 because of the time was, was uh, given to them to live over that 6,000 into the 7, which made John to say that in the 7, it was done. It was made because of us here in America. It was granted to the devils, white people, that they could live until that he had uh, arise the black nation. When they have heard it and become believers, all of them, or whoever believe, or who don't believe, just so it has reached the ears of the black peoples in America of who Allah is being the God of the universe and who the devil is being made by Yaqub in the year of 9,000. When it has reached the ears of our people and they get that understanding, then that's all she wrote. And it doesn't take no whole lot of years to complete a thing. But he fixed it in this manner after 1914, she can't stay out of war. America has not been out of war since 1914. That's right. She has been fighting all the time. And now, what is it that they are fighting today? Look how they jump on little small places. Look how they wants to make partnership with a man who got a gun just like he's got one. They wants to be partners with that one. Why not get the man who has built your country and made it like it is and be partners with him? No, uh -uh, don't want that. Well, that's why the destructions is coming. <coughs> that is why the destructions is coming to America. She brought it on her own self, the messenger says, when he went to your house in Africa and took you and brought you to this country here that was his great mistake he should have never brought you here and made you a slave he should have kept you where he was at 
let you alone and went someplace and got his own people. <laughs> but that had to happen. Then why did you go there and get the people from their country and brought them here? It was because that we had to prove Allah is God. Nobody else could prove it. Nobody else had the power. Nobody else had the, the, the strength and the will go to work like you and I worked in this country. That's why that in the judges the man wrote about Samson. They don't know how Samson come about. No, they can't tell why, how, about that man. But if you get the next paper, I'll have it in there about him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the messenger says, <clears throat> there is much more on this subject that I would like to teach and write, but the space is limited. Only the principles of the present Islam will remain. Only the principles of it. Well, the principles never changes in religions. And the principles in Islam never change. So, <clears throat> the principles will never change in Islam. Only the principles of the present Islam will remain the same as it is, excuse me, not as, but it is the black man of America who is referred to as the lost members of the lost sheep of his people. The awakening or rising of the black man in America must come first because he is the choice of Allah God in the person of Master Farad Muhammad for building a new heaven and earth. You understand that he's telling you this, that we are the choice of God. People say, God don't have no chosen people. Yes, he do. Every book that you read, you find that God has a chosen people. That's right. So, uh, we was the choice of Allah. Think how we was. We was made blind, deaf, and dumb by our open enemy. Made to be a person that's in a state that our eyes has been put out. Our brains has been bashed out of our head. No knowledge, none whatsoever. And was hated by an open enemy saying that he was our friend. Now we got to wait until we rise. We became like the lost sheep when the shepherd went out looking for him. When he count them as they came into the fold, come home in the fold of them, he, the shepherd stood there counting them all. As uh, he had 100 sheep. And when he counted them, he didn't have a 99. He said, one is lost. This is a story, a parable that is written in the Bible speaking about a people. And the Bible don't tell you nothing about a people of us. It talks entirely to us in a manner that somebody got to come and tell us. Say, this is you, man. The sheep is us. Why? Because we are like the sheep. We are like a lamb. 
we don't go out killing people before the coming of the devils. We didn't walk around killing folks, saying that we killed the one, we killed this one for a uh, loaf of bread. We weren't walking around drinking whiskey and no, no beer factory was in our land. Nobody there making coin whiskey and selling it to you on the side. Nobody making crack. Nobody doing none of these evil things, not until this white peckerwood came on. Right, right, right. Then when he got here, then he made us a fool. And now what are they trying to do now? They want to legalize that. Why? Because he's the one bringing it in. And he's getting the money. And where is the money coming from? From the devils who bring it to you and I. We pay for it and the devil is behind the whole thing. It's written. <laughs> so we, today as Master Farad Muhammad has said, must build a new heaven on earth. It is known that the holy city Mecca in the eastern world in Mecca Arabia is a heaven place. It's known today that it is a heaven. But look what the God who came in the person of Master Farad Muhammad said, we got to build our own, our own heaven right here in America. All of the evilness must be wiped out. And who's going to do it? You and I have to do it. If we don't do it, forget about it. Because we're the lost sheep. That when the shepherd went looking for him and counted 99, he left all of the 99. He said, look, I got a lost sheep somewhere. And he goes home and get his lantern. And he goes through the woods looking for him. Looking for the lost one. The trees mean men. Looking in this forest. In a waste place. No man's land. America. Looking for his lost sheep. That's the way the messenger taught it to me. Looking for us as a lost people from home. And he just found us at his birth. Not at the birth of those others. No. When God and Abraham were standing talking and, Abra and God said to Abraham, he says, your seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, Abraham. And uh, when they shall go there and serve those people for 400 years, I'm going there myself. He didn't say, I'm going to send this one or that one there. I'm going there myself. And when I get there, I'm, I will do the rising up of the messenger to carry the word. Because he is dumb. He's blind. He don't know what I say when I speak in the language that I speak to you, Abraham. I got to teach him first to understand. I got to learn the language he speaks so that he will understand me. I'm talking about Master Farad Muhammad and Elijah Muhammad. Elijah had to understand God. If God had to send an Arab here to us, if he had to send some Jews here to us, some Italian to some of these hunky Polacks or whatnot, if he had to send some of those to us, would we understood them? If he had sent some of those to us, would we been willing to follow them? We had to have a religion that would teach 
us freedom, justice, and equality. We had to have a flag to know our own selves. We had to have the knowledge of self to know where we came from. All of these things we had to know. Before what? Before we could even enter into the heavens of Islam. That's why he says, Behold, I make all things new. I make a new man with this new religion, with this new Islam. I'll make a new man for it. All places do I love. As God created the present heaven and earth out of nothing, so will God in the person of Master Farad Muhammad build a new heaven on earth from nothing. A people who are nothing. Think we was nothing, no, nobody like us. Our own peoples in Africa, they would come here, they didn't care nothing about us. If we went to Africa, they didn't care nothing all about us. If we couldn't speak their language, if we couldn't sit down and talk with them, they didn't care much about you. Oh, they'd look at the color of your skin and say, yeah, 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 black, black, black. But name be slave. That's right. The name of the person is a slave. His master rules him. So that makes it very hard for people who live in a place going in the name of a slave master, going to his own home now with a slave master's name. That makes it hard for him. How do you know, John? I met Africans looking just like us. Black, brown, and whatnot. We are, you know how we are mixed up in the color. I met black Africans When uh, I gave him my slave name first, he didn't pay me any attention, none whatsoever. After meeting him and shaking his hand, giving him my slave name, he just looked and that's all. Didn't pay me any attention. And the brother told me, he says, he won't pay you any attention with that slave name. And I tried him. I said, all right, I'm going to try him when I see him. And I did. And when he came here, he was cheated out of what he had. He had two pieces of diamonds about the size of your fist, each piece. Enough money to to do it don't know what with after it is chipped up enough money to do to have bought the Highland Park and Hamtramck put together the, the, the prices according to what it costs now diamond they will get him two houses for it he didn't know the valuation of the of the uh, stone that he had the devil did give him two homes for it. When I told him my name, I said, my name is Muhammad Sharif. At that time, that was my name, Muhammad Sharif. He said to me, yeah. He reached for my hand. And I saw him do something that you wouldn't attempt to do. In the car, he took the cigarette lighter 
and let it got real hot and burn himself and say he don't feel it. I see that did but now according to some of the teaching that when we went down into Africa following Brother Shabazz, his whole family, who was a scientist in his day, to prepare us to come to America to make uh, and build America. So he made us strong because he knew that someday we was going to be stolen away from here and brought into a strange country. He understood the words that God Allah had said to Abraham. In that day, they will be strangers in a strange land that is not theirs. But when it do, when that happened, I will go there myself. I will go myself. And after he came and rises up Elijah Muhammad, then at the end of the Old Testament, which opened up a new heaven and a new earth by black people, which is the last part of uh, Elijah Muhammad in the Old Testament in Malacha, Malachi. When it closes out with him that I will send you Elijah the prophet, he has already now raised up Elijah Muhammad the prophet. Not the Muhammad 1400 years ago. No, if he was here 1400 years ago and we was in Africa 400 years ago, we didn't need Muhammad. No, if we need Muhammad uh, now, then where is Muhammad? That's right. That's right. We need a Muhammad that would come from God and not one that got a revelation from God. Right. Okay. <laughs> All praise is due Allah for his coming to a blind, deaf, and dumb people. God in the person of Master Farad Muhammad. Build a new heaven on earth from nothing. A people that is nothing, counted as nothing among the nations of the earth. Because we've made 400 long years of slavery. And now we desire our slave master. We want him. Rather than to go free, we want to be right here with him. A foolish people. And a righteous people. A dumb people. But a good people. But the devil made us a wicked people by following them. So this is our job today is to build and to make for self. Build a home for ourselves. If we make a heaven and a, uh, on a earth, on this earth, if we make it a heaven, we got to build something, right? And that's what the messenger taught us, build for who? For self, right? Build for self. And if we build for self, we will make it a heaven. We can't make a heaven by building for somebody else. A people made from nothing, the messenger says, so that this world will have no claim on the making of the new people of the heavens, the new heavens on earth. The universal awakings of the black man must also take place. He is also blind, deaf, and dumb. Africa today is blind, deaf, and dumb. You see that. 
All the countries where black people live are blind, deaf, and dumb to what Elijah Muhammad has taught you and I in America. You has been taught the supreme wisdom, the supreme knowledge. You has been taught it. And you can't make yourself the ruler over another man that can build a house just like yours. How can you be ruling him? Right. He'll tell you straight, says, I'm equal to you. That's right. I can build me a house too. You must be able to build a house finer, better, better looking. All the way around, everything in your house must uh, be better than the devil's house. That's right. That's right. In order to be his ruler. You have got to have more knowledge of yourself than the devil have of himself. And you must have more knowledge of how to do anything that is done better than what the white man have. That's right. That's right. Well, what is it that uh, we have to have? You have to be re-educated. That's right. Black man have to have a re-education. That's what the messenger says. We think we are educated by the devil's knowledge? No, we are not educated by having white folks' knowledge. That's his knowledge. That's right. Your knowledge is a greater knowledge than what his is. That's right. Think on what Abraham said when he met uh, Nimrod. Nimrod had the two men there, one he freed and one he killed. And he turned to Abraham and said, listen, you see what power I got? A devil. Right. Talking to Abraham, Nimrod was a white Caucasian devil. Right. Look at him. See what power I have? I, I am the God. I got power to uh, save one's life and kill the other. And nothing be said about it. Nimrod. Right. What did Abraham say? He said, my God causes the sun to rise from the east. Can you cause it to rise from the west? Right. Abraham, Nimrod almost had a fit because he couldn't make the sun rise from the west. Right. So it is with the devil. Could he undergo all of the things that we underwent in America? No, that's why he came to our house and got our parents and brought us here. And as they birthed us, we had to work hard every day building his kingdom while he sit on a stump with a boring knife and a whip right. rifle and a 45 at his side. That's right. That's right. Well armed to the chief. You had no arms. Bound in chain with a ball in between your legs. That's right. Feet. That's right. Ball and chain as they call it. Right? That's right. That's the way you had to work. Some died. Many of them died in the field. Men and women died. They got history of it. I have one. Well, a woman that give back the, uh, yesterday, you, you would say it. And tomorrow, today, the devil made her go to the field and work in the hot sun. Yes, sir. That's right. And as she worked, she got weak and weak. The overseer wanted to whip her and did whip her. And then she couldn't wait. He brought her to the old boss man and he told her, nigga woman, you got to work. She said, I just give birth to my baby and the fever is on me now. Oh, master, please don't cut the poor nigger with your whip. He 
was going to whip her until she finished dying. He drags her up to the whipping post. When he got to the whipping post, she was dead. She was dead. Allah being so merciful, I won't let her feel any more of your misery. Right. No, but we don't care about that. This is in a new area for black people, right? This is a new time for you. We want to integrate and with the white Caucasian folks. We think they are everything. We think they are the gods. But the Holy One tells you no. They are not God. You is the God. Tell them to come challenge me on it. Right, that's right. I don't fear no man. That's right. I don't care what school he went to in America. I don't care what school he went to out of America. That's right. I don't care. Right. Bring him before me and I will take Elijah's words and make a fool out of him right before yes, everybody. Listen, I'm going to soon close because my time will soon be up. Listen. We say that white people is not devils. They say. We all the same people. Listen at the Quran here in the cow. What it says. <laughs> See, the book is written, you wouldn't want to read a book, you said, this thing is holy here, and look at it, the cow. That's the way our people is, a right, lot of that's them. That's right, right, that's right. No, I don't want to read that, look what it says, the cow. You want to read something about St. Peter and Matthew, right. John the uh, Revelator. Right. He wants to read something that's a little frightening and mixed up so that when he read it, uh, 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 you see, man, yeah, yeah, what, yeah, what is that? Look what Jesus said to, to Peter. Get behind me, Satan. That's what he said. He said that according to the book. He said, get behind me, Satan. All right, what he called him Peter Satan for when Peter was his disciple. Right. Teach me, man. Why call him a Satan, a devil. Question. This is what he says about Adam. And at the 34th verse. <coughs> Let's start at 33. I might have a time for it. Might not. Chapter 2, verse 33 of the Holy Quran. The uh, section, if you got use of, the section will be section 1, man based capabilities. Here at verse 33, he said, O oh Adam, inform them of their names then when he had informed them of their names he said did I not say to you that I surely knew what is unseen in the heavens and the earth and that I know what you manifest and what you did not hide and what you did hide I know it. 34 said, and when we said to the angels, make obedience to Adam, they did obedience, but Iblis. Some say Iblis. Right. I B L I S. Iblis. That's what my teacher called it. I don't know what yours called it. 
did it not. He did not make obedience. He didn't do it. He did it not. He refused. And he was proud. And he was one of the unbelievers. Iblis. Right. Was one of the unbelievers. Now let's go to the footnote and see what this man who interpretate these things, what he would say about him. At footnote number 58. Fifty-seven, fifty-nine, and fifty-eight. Let us take fifty. Fifty-eight and fifty-nine because it's very much that to be saved. Oh, we can. Then we'll make a break for, for 57, 58, and 59. I promise not to go over. Be back here next Sunday and we'll break the cake, okay? Because the time won't do it. You know, um, it takes a long time to break down certain things, and that's what I'm intending to do with yes, this subject. Yes, Make all things new. You know, I only got to one page, one page that what the messenger writ yes, wrote. And the rest of it, I was telling you what he had taught me and what he has taught others, but plenty of others did not get it like I got it. I got it from the mouth. Some have to get it by reading it, just like right. you get it by reading it today. I got some of it that he did not write. That's right. And he told you in here, right at the beginning, about how uh, he could not uh, write all because of time limited. And that's a fact. If you go to write everything that is that you want to say, even to writing a letter to a certain party, you would you can't say all that you want to say. You would tell them, say, I wish to say more, I write more next time or something other like that. Because the paper is limited for your time, you know, sitting down writing. Writing is a shortcut many a times to what you want to tell a person. So uh, I only had five minutes left from an uh, hour and a half. And I think an hour and a half is sufficient in this day and at the times that we have to go home and do a little work. And we don't want to go home in the dark because we got everything out in the streets. Right. If everybody would be here at 1 o'clock next Sunday, we will, I will show you that the devil is a man by the Holy Quran and the devil is the white people by the Holy Quran and by what Messenger Elijah Muhammad wrote. There is no such thing as a devil invisible. If so, in God invisible, how do we know who to, who to obey? You know, we wouldn't know. Both of these the other man over here, I can't see him. Yes, one over here, I can't see him. This one telling me do this. This one telling me do that. I don't know. So, the best thing for me to do is to not to say that what I cannot see. Right. That's right, bro. That's right. So, my dear 
beloved brothers and sisters, I bring this portion of my talk to a close. I salam alaikum. Thank you. I, I made that to, uh, I want just one tape each time with that on the, so that you could get it. I didn't bring the, make it, I, I forgot it at home. I tell you the honestly facts, I forgot it. I set the thing down there and forgot it. But in about three minutes, you would that tape would be ready that you could have bought. But if you be back next Sunday, you can get that one and Next Sundays, you will have two tapes, and uh, I don't because there's a lot that I got to say about that. There's a lot of pages in there, and I just only had one today. And uh, it's going to take the next one tape to go through with this one I closed out on. So I'll be back next Sunday, bring some more, and I'll prove to you by the Kawan that we are a people of God if I have that time, but I want to prove to you that white people is your open enemy and is the devil and his right. name is Iblis right. by the Quran. That one that said that uh, despite me until the day that they rise up, that was a man talking. Right. Men are orthodox Muslims believe today that Allah is naturally a spirit or a spook. You can't see Allah. I was in the temple a long time ago and they come to visit about 10 of Orthodox Muslims and uh, mixed with some uh, black Jews. They came in and um, time the minister say that many of us here have seen God. He wouldn't just point me out because none of the rest of them uh, might have been one there that day. I think my brother might have been there. But anyway, he uh, said many of us here have seen God, Allah. The man, oh man, that run everybody out. All of them left. He says, oh man, you can jump up. You can't see Allah. You can't see Allah. I told the minister, I said, Tell them to come back next Sunday that you will have Minister John Muhammad to teach. They made me sick, but not a one showed up the next Sunday. I was going to challenge them all. You can see God. You can see the devil. There is nothing hidden from the eyes of man, whether he be the devil or be God. There's nothing hidden from those eyes. For the reason of, you wouldn't know the creation of the devil, you wouldn't know what God created or what the devil created. They're trying to go all over the universe, right? They're in <laughs> ships, airships, going everywhere, taking them years to get there. But we made those planets. That's right. You ain't going around with them. You went as far as you could go, buddy. The rest of them, we got yards there. You can't get in there. You're going as far as you can go. Now it's time for us to chop your head off because we let you peek into the heavens. That's the heavens up there. Ain't no heaven that you're going to die and go to. How? No heaven you die and go to. You don't want to die to leave this hell yet. Right. How are we going to want to die and go to heaven? That's right. That's right. Well, when I see you kicking, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't say when you're dying, you start kicking. I wouldn't say that you're kicking 
to go. I say you kicking to stay here. Right. And that's what all of them do. That was an old rich devil uh, in the time of my father before he passed away. Living in Georgia, where we were all of his family was born. He had gold. Gold, trunks of gold, bushels of gold that they had taken and working as slaves for nothing. And uh, he got sick. He was, my father said he was so stingy. My father and my grandmother said he was so stingy that he, you know, back at that time, you know, you had a, you didn't wear collars on your shirt, you know. You had a little white strip around the shirt and you take a collar and you pin it on, you had a collar button sitting here and the collar button sitting in the back to hold it down. Some of you know that. So um, he had a mole sitting in the back of his neck, this devil. And he wouldn't, he was so stingy he wouldn't buy him a collar button to sit back there to hold the collar down in the back. He had a hole cut through the shirt collar up down here all the way through and he took it and fastened the collar back here through the mold and uh, bought him one collar button that was sitting in the front. If he had a mold in the front, he'd have fixed it up that way until the collar wore his mold off. So he died. When he was on the, his deathbed, he sent for every doctor that he could find. He sent down a bushel of gold for his first doctor beside the bed and told him, he says, if you save my life, take the gold. He says, I'm not ready to die. Doctor told him, say, you keep it. I take it, all right, but you keep it. I get it when you go. <laughs> so he died. But before he died, he had three bushels of gold sitting beside his bed trying to get a doctor to save his life. Uh-uh. When that day comes, you got to go, brother. You got to leave from where you at. And another one will take all of what you got. You don't care nothing but what they put on you to go to the field and push up daisies, as we used to say. No man live forever. No man has a soul that is going to live forever. When you die, that's all she wrote. Look how strong Samson was. You don't see another. I want to tell you how he got his strength one day. As I was reading last night, says if what the messenger has wrote about Samson, he said that if it's if his strength lies in his seven locks of hair, why would he use his hands and arms? <laughs> no, we we'll get it. I don't want to tell you what I'm going to write, so that's that. So now, my dear beloved one, the hour is almost a quarter to four, and I enjoy you, enjoy seeing you. Yeah. Yeah. I am not your blood brother, but I'm your spiritual brother. That's right. And I love you. That's I right. love you as though if you was born by my mother and father. That's right, brother. That's the way I feel about you. And the sisters, that's the way I love you. I don't boast about it. But I know how I feel about you. That's right. And so I let you know that I love you and I'm your brother. 
and you won't find another brother as close to you as I am That's to right. you. You won't find it. That's right. No. Get me a few hundred people to come here and join and be with us. Just a few hundred. And I show you how close I am to you. You have what you want. That's right. If I had the followers that other men have and claiming that they are teaching the same that Messenger Elijah Muhammad taught and what Master Farad taught, if I had those followers, I and you and others will rule America. That's right. That's right. That's true. Rule it. That's right. When we didn't have but one temple in Detroit, we ruled Detroit right. with one temple. Right. Master Farad Muhammad taught us whom I have walked with and talked with ate with and uh, as I just said how he removed that pain in my back wasn't exactly in my back but it, it was working all over my body and uh, when he removed it by touching my back brothers and sisters I knew that was God then I could feel the virtue of righteousness as he touched me. I was, uh, well, in one instant, I was like the woman who touched the hem of his garment, Jesus' garment. Jesus said, I know somebody have touched me because I felt the virtuousness of righteousness when it left me. That woman was a woman that uh, had an issue of blood and she didn't want to tell Jesus about it. That does not mean that this was a real something that happened in that day. That is happening in this time. In this time. Something concerning both the man and the woman. If I just can get a touch of that knowledge that Elijah's given to me, how to eat, to live, and uh, how to take care of myself. If I just can get a little bit of it, I'd be healed. That's true. And that's a fact. Jeremiah said, if my eyes was a river of water, was a fountain of water rather, I would cry down rivers of tears for the sakes of the daughters of my people. Then he asked, was there no barm in Galilee? Barm is a barm tree that you take and make a tea from the leaves. He said, if it is one there, my sisters, my daughters should get well sometime. I want to give all that I got. I want to hurry and do so. I want to hurry and do so. I want people to come here, plenty of them, plenty, and help me so that I can do these things for you. That's right. I am the last one that as I say, that will bring you this message taught by Master Farad from his mouth that I have heard and from Messenger Elijah's mouth that I have heard. I got both of them as a proof to you that I am one that have been with them from a baby, from a child coming on up. That's true. Nobody can talk to me. I have asked for people to challenge me. Right. Nobody will do it. That's 
That's right. I go to my mailbox at the post office. I'm looking there to see a whole gang of letters. Somebody's writing to ask me something. I keep looking up there. I can't see nothing today. Why? They don't want to challenge Messenger Elijah Muhammad's baby brother, and that's, that's right. me. That's right. They can't. What can you say to a man? What can you say to a man who have told you what to say when that question is asked? Right. Can't say nothing to him. Not only that, many a time people ask me questions, I know the answer before he get it out of his mouth. That's right. So my dear beloved brother and sister, come to peace. <coughs> come to your salvation. This is your salvation. That's right. right. Not that. This is your salvation. So come to it. Wear it. Nobody going to bother you. Nobody gonna say anything to you about wearing the flag. Your flag on your on on you. This is on your body. Right. W. D. Muhammad told us to take it off, right? right? I shook my head. I said, "Never will I take this off of me. Never." <laughs> what can you do with it? and don't have it. What can you say you have? Then he sent all of the people down into in the cities, go and get your names legalized. What you got to go to a man to legalize your name for? You haven't got one when you're going in the name of Jones, Johnson, Poos, and so on. You haven't got a name. That's right. Now what I got to go and pay somebody to name me? Did my mother pay somebody to name me? At least my mother didn't name me. My sister named me. Now, who did she pay to name me? My first name, Herbert. My sister Tommy named me Herbert. My family name was Pooh. Now, Pooh is a slave master's name. Right. Herbert also is a slave master's name if you look it up. It's a Jewish name, Herbert. So that's a slave master just the same. But my mother, my sister give me that name. Now by she being an original woman, that name now is not considered as a slave name, Herbert because she gave it to me. You understand me? But the pool now, this is the last name that I got to go in. Pool is a slave master's name. He changed that part of my name when my father, uh, Irvin Pool, was named during the grandfather, Irvin Pool was named uh, during the slavery time. That's where this pool come from, a white devil named my grandfather Pooh by staying on his plantation. So that's the way it went. We didn't have but one name to go with. Herbert or Irvin was not mixed. No. Pooh. Your name Pool, my name Pool, your name Pool, your name Pool. The slave master didn't call you by the, but by the name of the first name, what he wanted to call you. Come here, Jack. And by 10 or 12 men, you call Jack. Come here, Jim. Right. And we went to him. If he didn't do that, he whistled for us. And we look, all look at the same time. He said, hey, nigga, what's your name? Come on over here. He, he gave her all of these old foolish first names. 
last name was his, and then he called us the other, until mother and father had a little knowledge then to start naming their children, like James, John, William, and so on. Some men have families, Williams, last name, that was Deborah Williams, last name, and we have first name of William, without the S on the end, William. We have people that my father was named William, come from a slave. He was born one year after slave was free. My father was. What do we have today? Now I got to go and pay somebody to get my name changed? Hell no. Excuse me. No. Got to pay nobody to change your name. My name was changed. I was working at that time at Chrysler. Here comes two FBI men there and called me down. The watchman had to come and get me. They are not allowed to come in and take a man, you know, from, the, from his job. They are not allowed to do that. They got to send a watchman of the factory in there to break to come and get you. So uh, this devil came up and then my foreman came over to him. I saw him when he came up talking to my foreman and my foreman come over and got me, he says, you got to go down to the employment office, says, somebody down there wants to see you. I said, who is it? He said, I don't know. He knows, but he being devil too, he didn't tell me, you know, that the FBI was down there. So I went. I went with the watchman, and he says, uh, uh, what is your name? I said, Pooh. But that's what, what I'm working in, because I had been working in that name before um, the coming of Master Farad in 1930. I used Pooh, Herbert Pooh. So I got down there to this devil, these two devil FBI was down there, and uh, they asked me, "Says you Pooh?" I said, "That's what." I am called, knowing I was at the end of the rope from the watchman that I had to do my thing, you know. He says, well, uh, he showed me his identifications. He says, we are from the government. He says, uh, how did you get that name? John Muhammad. My name was John Muhammad then. I wasn't, I didn't have Muhammad Sharif. Master Farad had given me John Muhammad. He said, how do you get that name, Muhammad Sharif, or John Muhammad, brother? I says, I got it from a man named Master W.F. Muhammad. I said, he gave me that name. He says, I thought Farad gave it to you. I says, I said, his name was W.F. Wallace Farad Muhammad. I says, and we call him Farad, naturally. He said, oh, that's, I said, yep, that's it. He said, well, did you pay for it to be changed, have it legalized? I said, no, sir. I did not do so, and I'm not expecting to do so. He said, well, what name do you want me to call you in? I said, call me by my name, John Muhammad. He said, okay, Mr. Muhammad, see you later. And they left, they didn't come back no more. I didn't pay nothing. I haven't paid nothing yet. And many places recognize me and tell me, says, I don't blame you. I wouldn't pay for nothing either like that. Well, sure. They didn't pay my grandmother to uh, 
change her name, and she was a slave. She married in slavery. After they let her jump over the broom, she told me. So now we got to go now to the slave master of hers and tell him, say, here 45 or $50, I want it legal. No, it's already legal. If you name your own self, it's already legal. I didn't have a name, mister, so I named myself. What was your name before? They always wants to know what was your name before, will you tell them? Well, I had a slave master's name before. Well, you have to go and have it legalized, go downtown and have it legal. It's already legal. I named myself, it's already legal, I didn't have a name. Mom and Papa didn't give me this name. And here finally, if, if you stand out for yourself, you don't have to pay nobody to change your name. Just, just keep using that one. Yeah. One told me once when I went to jail. Yeah, I've been in jail too for, the, for Islam. I've never been in, locked up in jail, not until I become a Muslim. That's the truth. A lot of people tell me, say, well, that shows you that God was with you. I said, no, it don't. That shows I was with the devil and not with God. So God made me get locked up so I can get with him. So I went to jail. The devil taking my fingerprints. He says, you're around here changing your name. See, they don't like for you to do that. Right. Around here changing your name. Why didn't, uh, why didn't you change your fingerprints? Me and the messenger were standing right there together. I said, hell if I just, just. <laughs> well, I said something else that I won't say, you know. I said, well, hell if I had to change my fingerprints. You wouldn't have never known the difference because you don't even know my name. <laughs> so the messenger told me, you know, to be quiet because he, the devil had said, that told me, he said, shut up, I'll knock your head off. Standing there in the, down at 1300 Bobian Street. That was the time that the Muslims and the uh, uh, the police had a fight that was in 1933. So um, they wanted to, they wanted to do a lot of things and they did think one time that I was the messenger and they would come and get me and the messenger was in the bullpen. And they come and get me thinking that I was here on certain occasions, you know, by me being the first one that was locked up. The messenger wasn't locked up, not until uh, later. When they got me, when everyone come in, the others had to go down and do this and do that with them. So when the messenger come in, me and him went down to get the fingerprints again. That, uh, <laughs> so the, one of them called me and said, which one of you is Elijah Mohammed? Mohammed? Which one of you is Elijah Mohammed? So the messenger told him, he said, I am. I am Elijah Mohammed. He said, y'all look so much alike, I don't know which one is him. So, Well, they thought I was him anyway when we got up to the bullpen. <coughs> they thought I was him that would come in there. And they come and got me, carried me to the prosecutor's office and to the meters that came in. So the messenger told me, he said, as long as they think that you is me, he said, go on down and come back and tell me what they say. So okay. I liked it. I liked to play with them, you know, like that. But they didn't know, you see. It's funny for me <laughs> to play with them. Because I was already in jail. 
So what else could he do unless he hit me with something else? And if he had to hit me, I was so going to hit him back because I was a young man then, you know. And I, had, and I was stronger than Samson. <laughs> yeah. He had to hit me. I'd have put that judo on him so fast there until he wouldn't have known what kind of a man I was. That's right. You call it karate now. Same thing then. No. The uh, devil don't want you to have a name. Now we know the name won't free you and send you into after Armageddon um, is fought to free you from here. Don't take the name, that won't do it. The name is to show you that you are with the nation of your people. You understand me now? That you are in the nation of your people and if you keep your slave name that shows that you is in this nation of people. So when this time do come you can uh, be saved more quicker than you can over here. But what it takes for you to really to be saved is what I read to you from the Holy Quran about uh, peace being good to each other and love your own self and love your own people and be with your own people. That's salvation to you. It does. They, they, the messenger said the name don't directly save you. You can't be saved just with a name because there's devils got a name too. There's devil's name, Muhammad, Sharif, Ali, Bacha, and so on. There are devil's name that. Those uh, people who wants to be saved uh, in the hereafter, if the Armageddon come about and uh, destroy this country with mother's plane. But he said, let us pray that mothers, that we don't use mother's plane. That's what Master Farad said to us. Because mother's plane can destroy the whole earth. It can destroy the whole earth. Mother's plane can. It's got enough ammunition on it to destroy the whole earth and they still got enough on her to come back and get more and just tear it all, tear it so it's all to pieces. Won't be nothing left. They'll be like little fragments falling through the universe. Yeah, that's what's on Mother's plane today. I right, thank you, my dear beloved one. You got a question you want to ask me? Wait, uh, I didn't get it. I didn't get it correctly. Uh, you want a name for a uh, uh, name of Muslim name? You want me to give it to you? Yes, sir. Okay, come, but leave the, see the secretary when you go out, and they, they'll tell you what to do in getting a name from me, and next time I'll give it to you. I wish I had about a thousand to give a name to. I can name everybody on this earth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I wish I had them. To get a name. Show that it is real. Fight for it. Name it. And die for it. Yeah. Well, that's what they do. The slave master dies for his name. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the that's what they do. The slave master dies for his name. And the sake of his people. We do the same for our name. And the sake of our people. And then we will have governments looking up to us. Because this is a government that we're going to rise up. Not just to teach you Islam, no. No, we want 
you to know that this is your religion and you have freedom, justice, and equality in Islam here. So uh, now the main thing you want, if I got a flag, where well, I'm going to fly it in. Right? Right. He brought us a flag, now give me some land, now I want to stake it. See what I mean? Like the other governments have. So we got it. Let's get together and stake us some land. Right. We don't have to fight for it. We don't have to fight nobody. Nowhere on this earth. We don't have to fight the devil for cities. You see, the messenger has said that he wanted cities, right? That's right. Dr. King said he wanted uh, cities, right? God will say he wanted cities and uh, the boat to go back and forward to Africa. Boat too slow now. It take you too long to go to Africa on a boat. Boat don't travel very fast. So uh, if you unite yourself together, just get in unity with one another. Don't use any kind of a thing that will mess your head up. Don't use it. Use nothing that will make you be other than yourself. Don't drink beer. Don't use whiskey. Don't use crack or whatever drugs. You know, don't use that. Just lay it aside and unite with your people. And treat each one of your brothers and sisters as you wish to be treated. Right. And when you know anything, then somebody said, well, we'll ask for some. With, with enough of them now, you got to have enough people. All right, we're going to ask Mr. Bush tomorrow for a couple of cities. Now, he know you there, see. He know that you is a man of righteousness. He knows you there. You're going to ask Mr. Bush tomorrow for a few cities. All right, if you go to ask him, you don't need everybody going up there protesting. You don't need that. When they go to declare war, they don't get all of us together and declare war, do they? No, you have one or two men there do the talking. So just let one or two men go and tell Bush, say, listen, Bush, we want Alabama and uh, Georgia, Tennessee, and another ones of the South, one in the North. We want one in the North and those in the South. We want, due to facts, Mr. Bush, we want you to... Um, divide the country with us since we built the whole thing. We want you to divide this country with us. And uh, we want you to, what we make, we want you to divide, Mr. Bush. We don't want to uh, have to go and do uh, uh, international trading with anybody. You do it and you buy from us. All right. Why you want me to buy? And you got half of the country. Well, Mr. Bush, you see, if you buy, we know it's sold. See what I'm saying? Yes, sir. A couple of years from then, you got him. You got it made then, because if you buy what you produce, as fast as you produce something, you want factories, you want farmland, you want everything to produce. And as fast as you produce it, he got to buy it. That's right. And if he want to declare war on you, well, he got to see somebody to declare war on you. And uh, before Mr. Bush get up in the morning, he'll be dead. That's right. See what I'm saying? Yes, sir. You don't have to. You don't have to fight people like what. The South and the North do during the days of old Jeff Davis and whatnot. You don't have to do that no more. 
if you unite yourself together, black men unite themselves together in America, all of them, you will find a white man around here. That's right. He'll kill his own fool self. That's right. That's right. Master Farad said they'll make Detroit River real muddy. They'll go and jump in it because of you. Did you know a dangerous looking man is a black man when he gets mad? Right. Brother, that's a dangerous looking man when he gets mad and he black. Eyes to and red and everything and the, 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 he got the two or three gats on his side and a knife that long in his hand. I turn and tell you when that man gets mad. Yes, sir. <coughs> because that's me. Right. See, that's me. I, I don't. I don't want to be around. You can take it just by uniting yourself together. Right. This book says it. The Holy Quran says, "Unity will prevail." That's right. Just your unity will do it. That's all. Bring everybody you see. They want to attack me or attack you and you don't know how to answer the questions that when I teach, tell them, say, he's down there. Right. Come on to the temple there and ask him the question that after he stopped talking. They'll do just like the man did with Jesus when he was sent by Nicodemus in one of the books says to go and see what Jesus was talking about and when he got down there with his pencil and paper he threw it away when he come back Nicodemus asked him says, did you write anything what was it so I didn't write nothing he said you should have been there <laughs> if you had been there and heard him say it would have been alright yeah that's the way it is, brother. <laughs> you see the proof every time a storm come up. You see the proof of a black man. And that is clouds, which I often refer to. Go out and look up and see if the clouds is all white on the morning. All white clouds. You ain't afraid of nothing. Just say it's uh, cloudy, right? Right. Get up and or either just wait wait till that evening on the, of the same day, and all the clouds that you saw was white, is black, and turning on the lights and everything, because these clouds is darkening out the city. You begin to want to say, listen here, man, what's happening? He said, look up there. All of them clouds was white this morning. They black now. What's happening? You begin to feel like something is about to take place, right? right. Why? Because those are black clouds. I don't want to see that. As long as they're white, it's all right. But don't let them turn black you know something is going to happen. And it does. It does, something happen. If you unite together like those black clouds, unite up there and pour water down, you unite and ask for what you want. You get it. You get it right here. You don't have to go to the east to ask this king or that king to give me some money. No, you get it here. And when you get it here, you will see it coming to you just like, uh, excuse me for taking this time, yeah, take just like um, King Solomon. When Queen of Sheba came to King Solomon, what did she bring? Camels laden with all kinds of jewels and all kinds of stones and money. Forty of them camels she brought, and then when she got there with me, with this uh, richness, 
King Solomon was already rich. He didn't need that stuff. When she got there with her to give to him, he carried her across a float that was glass and water was under it. And as they walked, she thought she was going to swim. They went to walk and she thought that she was going to step in the water. And he told her to come on, you're walking on glass. And she walked on through with me, with him. And then she looked up at him and said, the half of you has never been told. That's talking about you. When you get into your kingdom, when you build it like the messenger said, build it, people will come to you and will be bringing you everything that you want from, from, from uh, other countries. This one would give, be given praise and would live longer if they would do it. If they would set you free with what you want, they'll live longer. If the countries, after that, is the, then the countries would come to you, your countries, Muslims' countries, Africa and all of them would come to you with every precious stone you could name. That's right. Certainly. Why? The slave man has made the change in the universe. That's right. <laughs> that's just a, that's just a little bit like that I'll tell you now. I was told what it would be. Yes, sir. Messenger told me it. Master Farad told it. Right, and these two big ears of mine who had so much of it till I'm almost deaf now when I hear you. That's right. They told it. Whatsoever that you do, you unite with Muslims. You can go to any of them, but I want to tell you this is the oldest place you can go to. I don't care who run in the other ones. No. Did they talk with God? No. That's right. Not one of them. It's a man someplace in New Jersey. He told me he, he had a little book there that he didn't tell me that he had a little book there that he um that he uh slept with Master Farad. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. No, he didn't. I wrote him and asked him, did he sleep with him? I guess he must have looked at the letter where it came from and didn't open it and come back. No. Don't nobody ever sleep with Master Farad. He'll sit up all night with you. That's right. I don't think you're going to get in the bed where he is. It, not even in the room where he is. I was around him for two and a half years. Don't ask me, do I know? I've never seen such thing happen. Two and a half years I was in his presence at the least two times a week in Master Farad's presence. That's right. He have sent me away so that he could teach the messenger. See, I wasn't the messenger. So I had to go back to the temple. I'm trying to play possum around there. I'm going to ride in the car with them back to the temple. He called me. He said, you got a post down at the temple? I said, yes, sir. He said, well, get out of here and get to it. <laughs> yeah, Master Farad telling me that. I got out of there and came. Here's something that people say that uh, Wallace Dean Muhammad said he saw Master Farad. He ain't seen Master Farad. I know none of the rest have seen. None of these other ministers teaching Islam around, they never sit and talk with Master Farad. No. They don't know even where he is to go. 
how can they go and sit with him and don't know where he's at? <laughs> People have asked me where he was. Yeah, I know. I know where he went. I was told where he went. That's right. He was, they don't know nothing about Master Farad. They don't know a thing about it. They wouldn't know him if they would see him. Out of all the pictures, well, he didn't never have but one picture made. The devils caught one of him when he was in the, when he was locked up. And the phony they tried to make of him, that saying that he was him, and he used to sell dope around with his silks and whatnot. He said that they know who. If they know he was selling dope, why didn't they arrest him? <laughs> That's easy to understand. That's too thin for a person to jump up and say. The main thing is, excuse me, the main thing is we should understand and know that we are a person who has been robbed of self. That's right. We can't tell a person all of this junk and they believe it? No. Minister Firecon said a messenger was on Mother's plane. When did he get on it? No, no messenger ain't on no Mother's plane. That man is dead. Yeah, he's dead. Well, the Holy Quran said don't mention that he's dead. I know it do. I done read through the Holy Quran. I know it do. Yeah. But his body is dead. Right. He don't have nothing living. Messenger Elijah Muhammad, as long as he been dead for 75, there is nothing you can find about him that is living. Nothing. If he was living, do you think the nation of Islam would have went like it did? That's right, that's right. No. If he was living, that was his goal. That was what he was to do, was to resurrect the people with this here. And he went until he passed away, as he told me. He says, uh, Allah, who came in the person of Master Farad, told me to take all I can. That's what he said. And that's why he lived so long in his condition. Brother asked me, he said, how come, how come uh, he have to be punished like that? I said, I don't know. I don't know. If I tell, at that time, if I had told the people at that time that he had to be like that because he's taking all that he can. And he told me he never asked Allah to uh, heal his body. I have to take all I can. Well, sure. He's the last one to come to us as a messenger. We'll never get another black man to come to us as a messenger from God. These little jack legs out here talking about they are messengers. Don't bother with them. If you don't come here, don't bother with them. Right. Because you're doing nothing but just messing up your whole families, your whole nation of people. Right. Now, I'll quit now. <laughs> I took another half an hour, so I'll quit now. But I can stand here all day today and tomorrow and the next day. Yes, sir. Answer your questions and tell you about them as well as I do the other teaching. Nothing, nothing these people have can ask me. What they gonna ask me? I have a book. I don't need them. That's right. Book is for the man that don't believe. That's right. That's what this is. all books is written for a person who don't believe. That's right. 
If you believe, what you going to do with the book? You don't need it. Just go ahead on with it and say, well, I believe it. I'm going to read this and I'm going to read that. If you want to read, then I believe it. May Allah bless you, my dear beloved brothers and sisters. Come back again next Sunday. Bring everybody but white folks. Right. Right. Bring everybody but white folks. When you come back, be prepared. We make he he Allah makes all things new. That's our subject. Continued to next Sunday. So when the secretary is going to come before you and uh after he's finished, I'm sorry I took this long. After he's finished, then we go home. Thank you. I saw I'm a lake of Thank you.